Bipartisanship broke out in Washington this week when the president announced a deal with both parties to lift the debt limit for the next two years and also increase spending limits imposed by sequestration. Welcome now a member of the Senate Budget Committee as well as the Agriculture Committee, Republican Senator Mike Braun of Indiana coming to us today from Capitol Hill. So, Senator, thank you so much for being with us. Good to be on, David. We got a deal, so we got past that. That's good news, I think, for most people. For the next couple of years, it looks like we won't have to deal with it. At the same time, it came at, at a cost. So was it a good deal, despite the fact that we're running up the deficit? You know, the benefit of uh, being a freshman legislator now, I was one back in Indiana about four years ago. So I know how the system works. I come from Main Street as an entrepreneur, and of course we do things more quickly get at problems way ahead or else the marketplace takes you out. So I was disappointed. They knew where my vote was going to be uh, when I got here in the first place. I ran on trying to run this place more like Main Street. And I guess I was disappointed that it was such a kumbaya moment. It didn't take that long. We did nothing in terms of attaching reforms to it or anything other than something so far out, which is one of the gimmicks that whenever you spend in the present, all the offsets are in years six through 10 when everybody's forgotten what you did five years earlier. So we, in, in our own conference, I spoke against it, uh, understanding for the president, and we don't wanna deal with a government shutdown, the political component of it, but I'm really wanting us to get out and do some real things between now and November 2020 on how we're going to fix the system so when we arrive here again, we're not just doing the same thing all over again. We're Democrats roll over for Republicans on defense, and we do vice versa on domestic spending. And we're, per we're perpetuating not having done a budget now in almost 20 years that we've appropriated to. That'd be laughed at anywhere else in the real world. Yeah, and talk about the real world. I mean, you, you and I have both seen strategic plans with that six to 10 year issue. I mean, we used to call it the hockey stick approach. You know, that's yeah. not so good so at the beginning, but then it takes off in years six through 10. At the same time, is there an argument this is actually what the economy needs right now? Because it is a form of fiscal stimulus. I'll put a chart up actually that shows, particularly in defense spending, this is significant fiscal stimulus going to the economy. Is this a time when the economy could use that? Because there's some softness now, particularly on the business spending side. You know, there, you, you could say that, but we're also in the context of the longest boom period and, you know, I, I think maybe forever. And uh, we, as a Main Street entrepreneur, everything we did before I got here with the Tax and Jobs Act, nothing has been more measurable and palpable that I think we're going to get way beyond the sugar effect the Democrats talk about. I really think we've got to get back to classic economics that when times are good, you build a rainy day fund. And I've just introduced a bill called the MAP Act, which means that we would start tabbing spending to a percentage of our GDP and do it based upon data from the past, take the revenue we've generated over the last 50 years, average it, and start working ourselves back from 18 to 19% down to 17.5, yeah. which is sustainable over time. Now, that's the kind of common sense stuff we need to start looking at, yeah. or otherwise we're going to just perpetuate what we're doing. And it would make a huge difference, as you know, over time with the compounding effect. Let's it turn would. now to the subject of trade. There's a lot of talk about U.S.-China trade, but looking at the exports from your home state of Indiana, boy, Canada and Mexico really figure largely in that. We still have the USMCA has not been ratified. That's that deal to succeed NAFTA. What are the prospects now that we've got the debt ceiling issue behind us that Congress can move on that come fall? That will pass with flying colors in the Senate. It will pass with flying colors in the House if Speaker Pelosi will bring it to the floor. It's sad that so much of what happens here is calculated politically. It will be the biggest thing for Pres President Trump this year, and that's why it's being slow walked currently. Farmers, business people, uh, Americans, Hoosiers, they all wanted to get across the line. Uh, I don't know of anyone that's against it. 
and regrettably, it's being slow walked for political reasons. Uh, I think that uh, Leader uh, Speaker Pelosi will pay a political price because I don't know of anybody that's against it. We need to get it done. Well, well you, you can agree with Speaker Pelosi or disagree with her. I think everybody agrees she's a pretty shrewd politician in the end. And if you're right, that's really going to hurt, for example, farmers. Doesn't she need those people to vote for some of her people, particularly some of the freshman congressmen who came in and took Republican districts last November? I think she probably knows that, but I think she'll try to extract a few favors by belaboring the point. And things have gotten so cynical around here and so political. One of the reasons I ran would be to cut through all of that, get the solutions quickly, take the politics out of it. That's one of the frustrating things, again, about being a entrepreneur and coming from an effective state government like mine, but that's the way the game is played. I think it'll actually happen. I just think it's silly that we're delaying it. Okay, Senator, I really appreciate you being with us, as we always do. That is Senator Mike Braun. He's a Republican from the state of Indiana.